Welcome, Giles. It gives me great pleasure to uh, introduce our second speaker, Susan Durgis, who is a photographic artist living and working in Devon. Her acclaimed work is held in a number of important museums around the world, including the Metropolitan Museum in New York and our own Victoria and Albert Museum in London. So over to you, Susan. Thank you, Nigel, and um, thank you very much for the last talk. It was fascinating. I, um, I'd like to take you on a very different journey now, uh, uh, physically into the night. I'm an artist who's not working on Exmoor, but rather Dartmoor. Um, I've been here for the past 30 years. And um, previously, previously to moving here, I spent most of my life in, in cities and towns uh, where I had very little notion of the night. Um, always living in, in like polluted conditions and um, very, very seldom really ventured out into the natural world at night. Um, when, I, when I moved to Dartmoor, um, the impact of the landscape uh, and the possibility to, to enter out and see a night sky that our, for, the same night sky, the same view that our, our forebears would have seen had a, a, a huge impact and I started to think how I could work with the night and decided that in fact because of the lack of light pollution the entire landscape could be treated as a big extended dark room and that I would be free to no longer spend my hours in the dark indoors but that I could venture out and observe what was going on in the landscape and, and make work with what was in front of me rather than bring images into a dark room to make prints or um, set things up in a dark studio to to illuminate them internally. So I think I'd like to take you on a journey um, that could be transposed possibly to Exmoor in terms of following a river from source to sea and um, talk about some of the qualities and experiences of that that uh, that that body of ma the making of that body of work and the kind of things I encountered. I'm going to share my screen to get um, to get the the work up, and I do hope this this works. Um, okay, so I um, live on the well, I moved to the northeast side of, of Dartmoor, where I'm sort of in, in between at this point, um, in between Widden Down and Oakhampton, just tucked inside the moor, um, in, in an area that is quite open. And there is a quality of, of enormous skies in that part of um, Dartmoor, just below Cosden Beacon huge huge skies at night often on on clear nights totally star laden with the ability to look up at the milky way and see whatever's happening um with with planetary um uh, transits and um, moon phases and i coming from such a different environment the enormity of this this landscape felt quite um overwhelming to to just launch into so I decided to start to look at the minutiae below it rather than try to deal with the kind of epic quality of it and this this is one of the images I made in a small pond directly below my studio where I, I would say one of the overriding qualities of night is stillness um, something happens when you leave the kind of busy world of reflected light and objects and um, bird song and um, people moving about and one's own thoughts being quite active. There's a kind of stilling and um, silencing that happens. Um, and I think other aspects of one's, um, one's person wake up a kind of alertness and a much more sort of instinctual primal sense of listening out for sound feeling things, um, temperature, air movement, um, and, um, and, and moving much more carefully um, through, through the, the, the environment. 
so the, this was just a, a, a looking down into a pool of water and um, looking at the, the mirrored um, view of the above. Um, and that's where I, I began. Uh, I, I thought that given that the landscape was a, a dark room, it would be possible then to take light sensitive paper outside. And um, I ventured down to the space I've just shown you with a very large sheet of photographic paper, black and white paper. This is about, um, must be about uh, 67 inches by 24 inches. It's about sort of physical body scale. And I ventured down to the, the pond just after some freshly laid fog spawn had appeared in, 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 in the water and slid the paper beneath um, and just exposed it to a brief microsecond of flashlight. And to my delight, when I got it back into the studio and developed the paper, there was a tiny newt at the bottom of the um, at the bottom of the print and the uh, spawn kind of is in, in negative form. So it could also speak of the above. I felt it sort of had a cloud like um, celestial quality to it, as well as looking at something very earthly. Um, and I decided to explore the same subject matter in a whole number of prints using colour paper. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, I managed to work with, for a long period of time, a, a beautiful paper made by Ilfochrome that exposes the um, image subject matter in a positive form onto positive paper. So you have true colour just directly printing um, through an exposure of light onto the paper. And this is the same site with, um, with uh, all the colour that would be there. The, the blue I later came to understand was moonlight. I, for a long period of time, I couldn't understand why some of my prints were being printed green or orange or, or blue. And then I started to notice that all the blue prints were happening at the time of full or very close to full moons and that the paper lying out in the open was absorbing some of the wavelength of the moonlight and um, becoming a kind of calendar, if you like, or a, a record of the, the moon cycles. And um, this, this went on to other ideas of, about the moon um, being very much connected to um, the cycles. And of course, spawn is the kind of classic cycle of um, the beginning of the year where you, you have life sort of emerging late January um, and it, it, it developing and echoing in a way our own human um, cycles of fertility and life and birth and death. So in a way, um, the intention with this print was to look at something very apparently maybe insignificant um, or small, but to speak about bigger themes that um, are increasingly and pressingly important to us in terms of how we value them. And we value them from the very minute um, to how they're um, operating within ourselves. Um, so I made over a period of time, many photographs using um, subject matter and water and the moon. Um, I, I would actually first of all, take large format photographs of different stages of the moon and then have that in a large transparency laid over the light sensitive paper so that I could then expose directly whatever I wanted on the paper's surface, if that makes sense. Um, I owe a homage really to a Victorian photographer, Anna Atkins, who was working in the late 19th century um, on direct photographic printmaking. Um, it, she was the first person to publish botanical um, herbaria and um, anthologies of of um, flora and fauna and algae. She recorded seaweeds of Great Britain and ferns, um, ma many different subjects in these beautiful books, which some of you may know from a very famous book called Sun Gardens, 
Um, this is one of her prints and it's a, a cyanotype where the paper's painted directly with a light sensitive photographic paper, uh, photographic um, medium, light sensitive medium onto, onto paper. And then the um, poppy heads are just exposed with um, sunlight uh, onto, onto the paper. So I, I'm very aware of this history of photography where there has been an exploration of the, the pencil of nature, if you like, or the ability of nature to kind of communicate directly through light onto a medium. Obviously the entire medium of photography does that, but um, there's something of a kind of direct uh, visceral sense to some of this kind of imagery that I'm very attracted to. Um, I, I began to work <clears throat> um, with rivers after, um, after a period of um, time. And this is an early stage of the River Bubby where I worked for some time, where the paper is immersed in the river with the hogweed and whatever's lying in the, in the river and exposed to give, give an idea of the, the flow and the complexity really of the environment that's creating the flow forms in the, in the water. Um, this is a, 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 a print of Holly in the River Tor. And you can see the different, this is just under a, a new moon and the previous print was under a full moon. Um, this is part of the River Tor where again, you have a full moonlight and all of the trees I studied um, lengths of the river tour, making a record of the rowans and the, the um, alders and willows and um, different trees and, and shrubs that was so plants that were surrounding, surrounding it and in a way um, shielding it from overheating in the summer and um, also setting up vortices in the water that would enable the river to to dredge itself um, effectively. In, in the winter, uh, the Dartmoor rivers, probably very much like Exmoor rivers, are torrent rivers, and you have this incredible force of water um, pouring off the land into the rivers. And um, in this case, peat heavily coloured the water so that it was um, printing a kind of golden, golden colour with the um, coloration of the peat in the water. Um, Alders are very, very much um, predominant in, in um, any riverside location. And uh, that, that's, that's one of those, those prints. Um, more of negative prints of, of the river and falling cascades of water and colored prints of waterfalls, which I, in doing, found, you could say, rather than um, nature in art, I mean, I think I found the art in, in nature and started to think of woodblock printing, like um, uh, Hokusai and Hiroshige's work in Japan, where I lived formerly, and other painting as well as, as references um, of how landscape was, um, was, was, was viewed as a, a, a sort of layering of, of subject. This, this picture of full moon and Hawthorne is reminiscent to me of Caspar David Friedrich, for instance, in, in some ways, the sort of sharp silhouetting of a, a stark form against a, a, a dramatic background. Um, it, it reminds me of that, that work. Um, there is something about Dartmoor, which is very much a kind of ambiguous feeling of being enclosed and in the below looking up out at vast skies and although this isn't a nighttime view it gives a sense of this kind of immersion in in a very sort of thick uh, enclosed world into into the um outside uh sky above i didn't started to make a body of work that um that, that spoke a lot of being in in the thick on the ground immersed in the below um, where you could see star fields from through subject matter 
Um, a lot of time I spent in a small area of wetland and woodland, just uh, looking at what was growing in that that area on the, the edge of the River Bovey and um, what, what was appearing uh, on the, the higher um, celestial sort of world in relation to the below. Um, so you have dandelion and um, honeysuckle. And then a lot of um, the reference in the next few prints is about the, the water cycle or the hydrological cycle moving up through the landscape, water evaporating from the, the damp sort of wetland up into the sky, forming as mist and cloud, and um, then clearing um, and views of um, the, the, the seeding of plants in relation to the the seeding impact of um, stars out into space in a much deeper time scale. Um, I was invited once to make an image for an essay in the New York Times about um, memory and childhood and the night. And um, there was one story which was about somebody's memory of rowing, rowing across a lake at night. And um, this was made back in my dark room with subject matter from a small lake and um, a, a kind of constructed image of a figure. And I think um, that that really is uh, what does happen when one is um, more still and more quiet, quieted at night, that there is an, a, a natural kind of wakening up of the um, imagination and the unconscious starts to fuse really with what's outside and that for an artist I think is an incredibly interesting opportunity to, to sort of um, open up the focus to something um, about observation but also about inner reflection and have the two things simultaneously um, coming together and in a sense I feel if um, we are to respond to the problems that we are uh, facing. I think this kind of connection or inner identification with the outside world is, is incredibly important because unless people can feel viscerally their connection to the landscape, I, I think it will be difficult for people to do um, some of the adjustments that they need to make to address our um, e ecological difficulties. So I, I guess that's the, the, the aspiration with the work that it will uh, bring people closer to things that are very important to them. Um, these are images of the, the shoreline where huge waves breaking across prints are, um, are uh, being exposed onto the paper, revealing the kinds of weather that is going on offshore. And um, I think think that's where I'm going to end here at the at the shore and um, pass pass on to Victoria. Thank you very much. <laughs>